Hello Year 4 and welcome to Science for Today. Today we're looking at the impact of changes made by humans to an environment. And in at one is deforestation. As we know, forests are amazing and they support so many different living things. So what does this mean? Deforestation is when the forest is taken away and replaced by something else. So in this picture here, you can see that the palm oil plantation has taken the place of the forest. So what does this mean to wildlife? Well, in this picture here, you can see the comparison between the amount of forest in 2010 and in 1973. The impact on wildlife in that area is huge, especially affected our orangutans. So what can we do? We can look for products that no longer use palm oil and therefore reduce the need for palm oil plantations. In it too is urbanisation. Urbanisation means that there are more and more people living in built up urban areas rather than in rural areas, which means that more and more houses and roads are being built on land which was once untouched. So what has happened? A huge impact has been on the number of hedgehogs that we have. These concrete jungles now do not fit well with the lifestyle of a hedgehog that needs to travel a long way to forage for food. So what can we do? Well, you can put some food out for them. You can leave an area in your garden for them to forage in. Or you could talk to your neighbours about making a hedgehog highway between your gardens. The video you're going to watch now will give you lots of tips. Well now, think autumn, and one particular prickly little creature springs to mind, the hedgehog. But in the past 50 years, its numbers have plummeted by a shocking 95%. Now though, Britain's first ever hedgehog officer is hoping to reverse that decline, as Marguerite has been finding out. When we think of wildlife heading towards extinction, we often think of rhinos or stunning tigers like JJ behind me. With zoos like this, for families to come and visit being the last refuge for these endangered species. But with one of our own here in the UK far slipping in numbers, could this become the final refuge for our humble hedgehog? Thankfully, there's a new hero on the horizon who's dedicated to keeping our prickly friends out in the wild and not in a zoo. Meet Henry Johnson, the UK's first hedgehog officer. So Henry, how did you become a hedgehog officer? Because I'm yes. sure when I was flipping through the book of careers to do at school, that one wasn't in there. Yeah, and I haven't come up with a decent joke to follow <laughs> my introduction, but I suppose it's just through working from the organisation I work for, which is People's Trust for Endangered Species. What is actually happening to the population of hedgehogs here in the UK? It looks as though we've lost about a third of the population since the millennium, so they're currently declining quite, quite severely. And what can we do in our gardens? How can we all help? And just gardening with, with as many different types of plants as possible to, to encourage the things they eat, slugs and caterpillars and beetles and worms. So if you have lots of plants and don't pave over your garden, then that's really good. They need a surprisingly large amount of room to roam in. 900,000 square metres of space to have a sustainable population. Hedgehogs love gardens, but the average UK garden is only 14 metres square, often enclosed by fences, meaning the hedgehogs get trapped. Henry's spearheading a new campaign called Hedgehog Street, encouraging homeowners to make small holes in their fences, connecting up neighbouring gardens to create highways for the hogs to roam. If we talk to our neighbours and work as a community, then we can ensure these guys stay around for uh, many years to come. Yeah, the current rate of decline, I think we're at a turning point, so it really is a bit of a call to arms. Now is the time to act to try and save them. With over a million acres of garden in the UK, this could make a big difference. Selena Birkenwald is one of 40,000 hedgehog champions who are transforming their gardens into a hedgehog superhighway. Selena, and what is it that you sort of fell in love with about the hedgehog? Well, they're, first of all, they're very cute. <laughs> um, they eat all the slugs in my garden. I have no slugs. It's fantastic. They're, they're not a pest to anybody. And what have you done to make your garden more hedgehog friendly? Oh, let me show you. <laughs> we made tunnels under both fences. Can you see down yes, there? Yes, yeah and then another one through there. And 
And to make sure the tunnels don't get blocked in the future, they've been marked with Henry's handy signs. So you've literally got a, a corridor, a highway. A highway all yes. the way through these yes. your neighbours' gardens as well. Yes, yes. We have badgered the neighbours. They've all been fantastic and they've all become very excited. They have hedgehogs. Other people tell us they have hedgehogs. So now everybody orders food. The neighbours over there, they have one that shouts at them if they don't put his food out <laughs> at the right time of night. And he goes up to the glass and he makes a noise and they have to rush out with his food. They're real little characters and it's, it's wonderful to get children and friends involved because these little creatures are too precious and need to be saved. Next door neighbour Elliot's certainly doing his bit. Hi Elliot. So who's this for? Mr Prickles. That's a feast and a half. It's feeding time for Mr Prickles. Ooh. Mr Prickles will be tucking into nuts and seeds, but you could always leave out cat or dog food and some water. But no milk as hedgehogs are lactose intolerant. Mr Prickles goes down Job done. Hedgehog's fed. Hedgehog hero Henry's got a job for me too. Henry, what is it about somewhere like this alley behind all these houses that they love so much? This scruffy bit at the back, they actually need even more, more so than your, than your beautiful beds for foraging, for nesting, for all the different parts of their life cycle. And this is the time of year they're starting to look for that hibernation, that yeah, perfect... Yeah, exactly. Henry's enlisted another neighbour for the Hedgehog Highway. And with the light fading, there's no time to lose. We're heading towards their favourite time of day. They can't get through this back fence, and we really want to connect the garden to this to this network of land here. To make so, it easier for them. So, yeah, I think down here would be the perfect place okay. to put one in. Hedgehog Street has so far signed up 10,000 gardens to be hog superhighways. Well, we're certainly getting to that hedgehogging hour of the day. There's not much light left. But with 25 million homes across the UK, there's still a long way to go. OK, officially a hedgehog superhighway. Yeah, jobs are good. In. If you'd like to become a hedgehog champion, go to hedgehogstreet.org to find out more. And in at three is global warming. This is the world getting warmer because of the amount of carbon dioxide that we humans are producing, making the world a hotter place. What's the impact? Glaciers and sea ice are shrinking, which is causing sea levels to rise with catastrophic consequences. Some scientists think that global warming will also cause more extreme weathers like hurricanes, drought and flooding. So what can we do? Well, you can buy fruit and vegetables in the right season. And instead of taking the car, you can walk or cycle. In at four is intensive farming. The bigger the population is, the more demand there is for food. What's the impact? Well, hedges are removed and wildflowers are disappearing to make way for bigger fields, having a huge impact on bumblebees. Bumblebees are another population which is in decline. And the more intensive farming happens, the less bumblebees we have, which actually impacts the pollination of the plants that we in turn need. So what can we do? You can plant some wildflowers anywhere you can to encourage the bees. Number five, nature reserves. Nature reserves are a positive human impact. These are areas that have been allowed to flourish again that are well managed to allow native species to survive. Broadcroft Quarry in Portland in Dorset is a great example of this. It's a disused quarry that's now become a nature reserve and due to humans managing it, these different species of butterflies and moths have been allowed to survive. So what can we do? Well, you might decide that you want to volunteer for a nature reserve or think about closer to home. Think about your garden. What can you do in your garden to allow native species to thrive? OK, so your task is to choose one of these areas and tell me what changes have happened, what impact 
does this have on living things in that area, in that environment? And what can we do to help those living things that are in danger? If you want to, you can watch the video again and maybe pause it so that you can add the detail to the different parts of your task.